Hey everyone, my name is Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. Today, I'm going to review an application called Video Toolbox. It's basically a toolbox for your videos. It's designed for the Mac, and it's really handy for doing all those things you want to do for your videos before you launch them on the web. So let me walk you through all the features here. I'm going to actually start from the beginning here, and I'm going to bring up a Finder window, and I'm going to start by just dropping the video into the left hand panel here and you can see the video corresponds through the viewfinder here above there's some thumbnails below that you can scrub through and then there is the media information on the right so this first option on the top left hand side is basically for information only uh, it gives you information general information about the format the profile the duration file size and so forth on the video you can see other basic information regarding the codec as well as the duration, frame rate, the, the height and width of the video. In this case, it's 1080p. And then the audio information, AAC formatting for audio, as well as the bit rate for audio as well. Uh, basic information. What's really nice, though, if you want or have any reason at all to export this information, you can extract it, as you can see in the bottom right corner, and in the form of a text file. Or if you select the drop-down menu, you can export this information here into an RTF file and or XML, JSON, or, or PLIS file. Uh, on the left hand side again if we go to the next tab you'll see that there is a snaps feature. So basically you can pull snaps from your video using Video Toolbox and if you go to the right hand side here you see that you can pull snaps like that are every three seconds or every 20 seconds or however you want it. This video is about I don't know, a minute and a half or so. Um, if I was to select 20 seconds, every 20 seconds, you'll see down below that that will pull four frames for this short video. But you can go through and make the necessary adjustments in case you want to reduce that to 10, in which case that will now give me nine frames total. And then we'll extract those and then save them in the form of P and Gs. So if you want me to test that out and show you how that works, I'll go ahead and do that. So I have a picture for a snap for every 10 seconds if I go ahead and extract them I have the option to save them so I'm going to go ahead and navigate to this folder that I have set up for video toolbox and I'm going to go ahead and just save them in there and I should have nine images in this folder see they're just populating here So I can go through and just show you briefly with some of the examples that just showed up. Um, so that's a really nice feature for Video Toolbox, to be able to pull snaps. So in addition to doing those snaps by second, you can also do them by frames. So if I want to pull 10 frames from the video, I can choose to do that as an option. You also have the option to include the first frame and or last frame. And down below is just some naming options where you have the movie name, the image extension, but you can choose any one of the extensions down here below. If you want to add some additional naming features, just simply take them and, and drag them up above like so. And if you want to get rid of them, you just select them and just delete them. Let's go down to the next feature, which is time lapse. Now, what's really cool about this is, yes, you can actually create a time lapse video from your video file. And you can do this by frames, just like the way I did with the PNGs, I can actually choose every three seconds, every 10 seconds. Uh, obviously, for a time lapse, I won't want to keep them low. So, three was pretty reasonable. Um, that can include the first frame or last frame if I want. Um, you can also choose the size pixels that you want, as well as the intervals. Uh, the intervals will also determine how fast you want this to go. I want this to go pretty fast, so I'll keep it down at 0.15. You have the option to save this as a GIF or as an M4V file. I'm going to go ahead and, and choose the M4V file, and I'm going to extract these uh, images from my video to be a time lapse every three seconds uh, at 0 0.15 intervals. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and save it to that same folder. Okay, the time lapse video has been completed, so let's go ahead and take a look at how this will look when we play it back. So this is at 0.15 intervals. Pretty cool.
That was extracted from the actual video file that's adjacent to it here. This is the one that I dragged into Video Toolbox. This is, once again, the time-lapse version. Let's go down to the next menu. Right under time-lapse is the thumbnail option. So here you can basically create thumbnails. But these are thumbnails that are created on a single image. So basically as a, a JPEG image. So you can have as many thumbnails as you want. So if I wanted to show someone a single image of multiple thumbnails representing the sequences of this particular video file, I can choose how many rows or columns I want that to have, the width and size, uh, as well as what kind of border and so forth. You can even choose to have metadata at the bottom or top of this JPEG thumbnail image if you like. I have them deselected because I just want to have the images in rows and I have four rows and four columns uh, that's pretty cool and you can see down below that I have 16 frames if you change the number of the rows or columns obviously the number of the frames will increase or decrease but I'm going to keep it at four and four and let's go ahead and extract that to see what the thumbnails look like I'm going to save that to that same folder let's go ahead and navigate to the finder window once again and actually you can see that this is being processed at the moment so it actually hasn't shown up yet so let's go ahead and wait a few minutes for this image to appear and again what is going to be here is basically a jpeg image with those thumbnails that i just set up so let's take a quick look at this so this is basically what the the outcome is of the thumbnail generator which is pretty cool Okay, now let's go ahead and navigate down to the next menu option here on the left-hand side, which is Flip Book. Um, so in, it, in contrast to the JPEG that was generated before, uh, in this case, the Flip Book is, comes in the form of a PDF. And, and again, you can set up the snaps however you want them, whether you want to set them up by second or by frame. You can include the first frame and last frame or not include them. You can also determine the number of rows and columns as well as the X, Y margins uh, and so forth. And down below you'll see the total number of frames that you're going to have when you generate your PDF flipbook. Basically it looks very similar to the thumbnail options, uh, just a little different in terms of the formatting. So let me just go ahead and extract this so you can see what the flipbook actually looks like. So let me go ahead and navigate to the finder window and you can see that the PDF is still being generated here, but it's right to the left of my thumbnail image. So let me just go ahead and repeat and show you what the thumbnails look like in the previous version when I created the um, JPEGs. And now that the PDF has fin finished rendering, let's go ahead and look at that and see what that looks like. So this is basically what the flipbook looks like. Slightly different format. Um, but a very similar purpose or function depending on what you want to use this for during your production process. Okay, so underneath the flipbook option is an export option. And here you can actually export your video file into another format. Now there may not be a whole lot of options or reasons for doing this, um, but it still is nice to have this option. And let's take a look at what actually comes uh, with this cool feature. So let's look at presets here. You can see that the app has already been set up for the HV, HEVC uh, formatting, uh, which enables you to compress the video in a more reasonable size. Uh, that's something new that Apple introduced. But you have all these other options uh, as well, including low quality, medium quality, high quality, as well as the ability to change the aspect ratio of your video. Now, of course, the only thing you cannot do, and this is pretty standard as far, at least as, as far as the practice of producing videos goes, is you never want to scale upwards. So you will not be able to scale upwards when exporting. So this is a 1080p video. The only thing I want to do at this point is to scale downwards if I was to change it to another format. So I'm going to go ahead and actually go down to 640 by 480 and you see here you have the option in terms of types you can i can keep it at m4v which is the current file format or i can change it to mov or mp4 i'm going to go ahead and change the format to mp4 
just for diversity's sake. Uh, but in this case, what I'm doing here is reducing the file size. I'm going to go ahead and export this. This is going to take a while to render, so let me go ahead and render this for uh, first, and then I'll show you the um, results. Okay, I just completed the export, so let's go ahead and navigate to the Finder. And we're going to go to that MP4 file that I just created. And let's go ahead and take a look. I think there's some sound with this video, so I'm going to be quiet here for a second. Hi, I'm Suzette, and welcome to Fitness. So as you can see, the video has been greatly reduced. It's down at a 640, 480 uh, aspect ratio. And the quality is still pretty good, though. It's just been reduced in size. It only took about a minute and a half, uh, two minutes to actually export this. Um, again, really nice option. Okay, let's move on down to the very last feature, and that is the metadata tab. Uh, in this section, you can actually update all the metadata that is associated with your video. Uh, let me show you how you can do this. So first, let's look at all the different uh, pings that we have available. You have the ability to add a short description, a long description, and, and also copyright information, comments down below. Uh, you also can add the name, the actor, director, writer, producer, and any keys that you want to add, the genre and the studio and who it's by and so forth. As you can see on the left hand side, you have the option to customize your own thumbnail, which is really cool. And you can also import data from other sources. So we go to the right hand side. Uh, you can first begin by just cleaning all fields if that's what you wanted to do to get started. So let me just go ahead and do that. So all available fields have been cleaned. Um, now I have the option to copy information from another file. I can search on TMDB or a movie database uh, to get information there and or save metadata when all your data has been added. So let me go ahead and I'm not going to go in any one order. I'm just going to start with the search, the TMDB for movies. Uh, basically, I'm searching online for a movie database. And I know that the content that I'm looking for is not going to be there, but I just want to show you what how this works. So I'm just going to try and find something that says yoga exercise. Okay, here you go. I'm just going to click on that. And as you can see, it generates all the metadata associated with that video automatically into the fixed areas that have been set up here. Obviously, this is not something that I want to use for my purposes because this is not a Jane Fonda video. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all fields. But that's just one option that's available. Now you can also copy information from another file. So what I actually did, the other file that I created earlier of the time-lapse video, I actually added some metadata information to that file. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that information and just pull it right into this video file. So I'm going to go copy from file and I'm going to navigate to video toolbox where that file has been set up and I'm going to select that time-lapse video and open it up. And as you can see here, all that information that I added to that file has now been added to this one. So this is actually very handy if you are producing a series of videos that have all the same content. And you just want to be able to just quickly duplicate that content. There may be some adjustments that you may want to make, say, to the long description, for example. But as you can see, this is definitely an option that will come in handy. Okay, so in addition to all the cool ways in which you can add the metadata to your file, of course you can do it manually, you can also update your own thumbnail. So if you go back up on the left hand side, you'll notice that every menu option that you have here gives you the ability to adjust the video track down below. Uh, so for example, you can go through and scrub through and trim how much of the footage that you want to export. Uh, you also have a settings icon right above it. So here you can actually choose to rotate videos if you want to do that. You can also flip videos horizontally or vertically. You can also control the volume level from here as well as the speed. You can speed it up or slow it down. I think it goes as high as 180%. Uh, you can also navigate through your file as I showed you earlier by scrubbing or you can use the arrow keys to go back and forth if you want to fine tune 
what frame you want to arrive at. And once you have everything set up, you can then choose the export option here to shave, uh, save as a PNG, JP, JPEG, or TIFF. And or you can share to, through social media, through email, messages, and so forth. But let's get back to the thumbnail option because that's probably one of my favorite features. Um, basically, you can choose any artwork that you select from the video and, and it can become the thumbnail image that references your video. So what I'm going to do here is scrub through this video here until I find me the right frame. I'm going to actually use the arrow so I can go a lot slower. And what this is going to do is help me to find the right image that isn't too blurry but just enough to give me that thumbnail image that I want. Then once you find the image you hit the export option and you can save it as a PNG, JPEG, or TIFF. And then when you go back to that metadata window you choose the choose option, gravitate toward that file, and now becomes your thumbnail. And once you set, save metadata, if I was to navigate to the finder window here where I just updated my file, you'll see here that that thumbnail has now been added to that video. Let me go ahead and enlarge it so you can see how that thumbnail that I captured now shows up full screen, edge to edge on that video. Okay, and that is Video Toolbox by Jeremy Vizzini. And you can see here it is available in the Mac App Store for $4.99. You can also click on the Video Toolbox support link, which will take you to this page here, where you can find out more information about Video Toolbox as well as some of the other apps uh, that developer makes. Um, when you click on the Video Toolbox option, you will find additional information. Uh, a lot of information that I covered today, uh, but you can also have it here at your own leisure for you to check out. Uh, the only thing I do not find on the website is any contact information for the developer. Um, so you may have some issues with that, but if you have any questions, if I can help you, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. My name is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Marble Podcast. Check you out next time.